This painting was mainly composed of colorful blocks chosen from the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, with some additional colors such as black, gray, and white. The beauty among the abstraction of this painting is immortal. But the strange thing is, the artist who created this painting, Mondrian, his early art style, his early artworks does not really look at it, uh, look like this. For example, like this. and that. So what caused the uh, Mondrian's art style to shift so radically, changing from the realistic classic art style into the abstract modern art style? The key to understanding, uh, to understand this question is thinking outside the box. When we first think about the term thinking outside of the box, we mainly think that in order to achieve it, we have to, uh, the one's own change in mind is the most important factor. But in my opinion, that the most important factor is not to shift one's own mind, but the changes and the shifts in the environment around the mind. Mondrian's life is a perfect example of this. Born in 1872, Mondrian had experienced many incidents very significant for both the whole hu history of humanity and art. Uh, Mondrian had always been a great artist as a, as a young age. He had a dad who was a qualified art teacher as, at a primary school at, in his hometown. And young, under his dad's influence, you know, Mondrian also often painted along the, side, uh, along the riverside at his hometown. In 1892, Mondrian got into the Fine Art Academy in Amsterdam. During this time, there's one really important incident that happened in art history that shifted the art history forever. It's the invention of camera. This meant that one of the most important function of art on up until that time was taken away, which is visual records and passing on messages to the uneducated ones who can't read. A picture can be more, uh, taken by the camera can be more realistic than the finest art of the Renaissance and the picture taken a, a picture taken by the camera can be more uh, as lively as the best sculptures of the ancient Greek. After this incident, the, art, uh, the artists and the audiences began to wonder, why do we even need art if, picture, and if photography can exactly practice its function? This questioning caused the rise of Expressionism. This is one of the cl classic paintings of Expressionism by Monet. Um, so, the young Mondrian at the academy was heavily influenced by this style of expressionism, but it's not a barricade for him. Later on, he broke through the boundaries of expressionism and got in touch with another significant art style, which is also introduced in the er early 20th century. That's Cubism. The as we know, like the, cu the, cent the center of modern art was in Paris, but Mondrian lived in Holland. So, but after he's got an in, in interest with the newest art style of Cubism, he went, uh, hopped on the train and went to Paris. This is what we call outside of the box thinking. As we have to know that Mondrian at this time had already had a prosperous life by selling his expressionism art and does not really have to shift to a new art style because he's, although not very famous, but still kind of successful in his area of expressionism. But he still w went to the, to the center of modern art and got in touch with the artists behind the pa the, these cubism paintings. So this is this courage to search for new opportunities is what we call outside the box thinking. This bravery of breaking the boundaries of the expressionism and moving on to another art style was what we call thinking outside the box. As we see here, this is a, one of the paintings that Mondrian painted during this time. And this, as we can already see here, that there's a, already a great shift between the paintings that he was painting before and the painting here. He was painting a tree in his, this picture. And he used some, some cubism, classic cubism 
usage of paint, painting, of putting different perspectives of a object and putting them on a on the same canvas. But but this is not what Munjun stops. Later on, he went, uh, there's two, uh, but without the shift, the radical shift in the environment around him, he won't be able to achieve and step into the area where he had, had achieved today. These two incidents is the two world wars. During the, during the wartime, the extreme violence and chaos in the world wars greatly shift both Mondrian's arts and mind. After World War I, world war I broke out, the cruelness of the warfare and the pain and the screams and the loss of millions of lives greatly impact Mondrian and shocked him. He decided he, that he wanted to attempt to change. He, went, uh, he stayed in Holland and started drawing some very new artistic pictures that was not very different from before with some several, several friends. His art, um, so as we see here, this style of painting was all about expressing the principles of the universe, bringing them into reality through art. This painting was composed of colorful blocks and straight lines to emphasize its core of anti-violence and peace and order and the, uh, the kindness in the deepest of humanity. This, call, this was called neoplasticism. The art style, um, this art style is what uh, is, is brand new and broke the boundaries of cubism and expressionism. It's not only very different from the classic art style, but very, still very different from other modern art styles. But later, uh, Mondrian had already break the boundaries and step into a brand new world a great artist was born. Later on, he, after World War II broke out, once again, Mondrian got, was impacted by, by the other war and he decided to migrate to New York. In his last four years, his art and his creativity peaked. So as we see here, that th this, uh, the newest drawings made by Mondrian focused on extreme uh, abstraction and only comp drawing was the, and the drawing was only composed of several block blocks, and looked very mathematic. This is uh, another picture showing how the draw uh, dr the style of Mondrian shifted. So uh, this will help us to understand. So the life of Mondrian is actually very simple. So it's just about. A normal, a normal man who got some creativity inside of him, but ex born in the age of significant chaos and, and shifts around him, went to the environment that was suitable for his, to ignite his sparks and resulted in an outside the box result through outside the box thinking. So, Mondrian's art is immortal, but he's like every one of us. He was not very born very talented like Leonardo da Vinci or Pablo Picasso, but he has his own way. He, he, tr he, tr he attempted to find his own way of success through outside of the box thinking. And his paintings once again proved that the environment was very important to one's art uh, to not only to art, but for every one of us. Yes, I admit that there's some luck uh, that we need uh, that we need luck to be born in the right environment to to, to result in a outside of the box thinking result. But and other than just praying for the luck, we sh what we should do is just actively seeking for the right opportunity, the op uh, the right chance, the right place, the right person to help us to achieve the, the success and the result. In, 
a few years, uh, and the uh, outside of the box thinking is actually everywhere. A few years later, an, a fashion designer, uh, Yves Saint Laurent, he designed the famous, uh, the famous dress of uh, the famous dress using Mondrian's famous squares. Um, the creativity and the outside of the box thinking among Mondrian's painting has passed on its torch. And I think it's time for us to take actions too, to find one's own way of success through outside of the box thinking and actively seeking for your, ch for your chance to ignite your sparks. Thank you. Thank you.